That's right. He's even good too tonight. That's right.
And I was there the night that baby was born, and I saw the hurt in their eyes. But after that baby was born, all of a sudden the hurt went away, and it was just joy and joy and joy and joy. And it's been a lot of years, and it's still been joy. But that person, instead of being a critic with critical spirit, after they participated, they became instead an advocate for this. And they, over the years, have helped many, many that were in this kind of situation. So, again, we have to watch the critical spirit because it will get us. It'll get us, it'll get us, it'll get us. You know, uh, Daniel, again, today, was apologizing. He said, no, son, you were just getting me ready <laughs> for Bethany. <laughs> and I said, matter of fact, I said, uh, Bethany, ever since we've got her, from day one, there was always problems because she she had been in trouble. Um, she had been uh, in, she had been the most abusive kid in three counties. She was in bad shape, and and God really did a work with her. Uh, and God had done some awesome stuff through our love for her and through His power. But I said it seemed like every year there was always something different. I said, but this year she decided to quit swinging for the fence and she just went ahead and put it over. And Daniel, and Daniel laughed and said, I know, Dad, I'm sorry. I said, well, Daniel, it's life, buddy. We, we, we can't run from it. It's life. It's life. And I said, you, you, you just got to accept it and love it and move on. Because, buddy, it's only by the grace of God you didn't get wound up. You know, in there, or me, myself, or any of us. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. We got her. We got her. We, we were her foster parents when she was four. We adopted her when she was five. And 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 I and, and of course, there's some people think, well, she was so young, she won't remember the abuse. But let me tell you something. In counseling studies that I've done, uh, first off, once you go through complex trauma, it reshapes the brain. So because it reshapes the brain the way the brain acts and reacts, you can retrain it, but there's still always that possibility, you know. And so, and the younger they are, they found out the younger they are, sometimes the worse, the worse it does them. And it's even possible a baby in its mama's womb. If the mom, if the mama is subjected to severe trauma, that baby has a problem with that trauma also. And after the baby's born, and years later, that baby may have to deal with some kind of help in that trauma. So, trauma is tough stuff. And her, her, her stepdad, her stepdad broke her face to the point, you saw the operation she had. Her stepdad broke her face to the point, slammed her in the wall to where this all stopped growing and it took from the first operation was at, at four, the next operation was at six, and then she had an operation, uh, I'm trying to think of the operation, but then she got the braces because the doctor said, I can't do anything, it's too damaged. And so they started putting braces on her mouth. And, and tried to get her head aligned, trying to get aligned this stuff because she was like this, because the growth plate was broke. And so it took four or five years of braces, and when her, when her uh, skull stopped growing, then they went in and cut it with a buzz saw and set her, jaw, set her front, top jaw up over, over a half an inch. And she got titanium holding it together. And then, the, and then they put bone up in her face because she uh, had no place to put a nose. And so then it come in a year later and built her a nose and fixed her nose back. And so uh, she's been through some things. Uh, been through a lot of stuff. Uh, that does not excuse what she's done at all. And I'm not giving it as an excuse. I'm just saying it is, you know, again, uh, once you've been through stuff like that, it helps you to, to understand and to help other people going through it. So, so again, that's not, that's not giving her a free card. No. No, 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 no. I'm just saying is, 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 she doesn't think like DC and Daniel. She doesn't respond like DC and Daniel. And, and, uh, sometimes she can be too understanding or too clingy. And she, that one girl had her so convinced that she was the only one that loved her that she got her doing, got her in all this now Bethany knows, and Bethany says, I love you. 
And so, uh, matter of fact, we sit down and said, let's talk to the legend. We started naming them off. And as we started naming them off, once we got them past the first two hands, then we started naming people off in this church. And she started crying. I said, who in this church loves you? And the very first two people she said, And then she started talking about all of y'all. She named off y'all. And she said, you know what? I got a lot of people going And I said, we're with you, girl. Yeah, you messed up. We're with you. But here, let's get over here. I'm getting off I'm getting off on the subject here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. So here we are. Circumcised Jewish believers unjustly criticized Peter for daring to fellowship with the uncircumcised. Have you ever been criticized for talking to folks that didn't go to church? Mm-hmm. Have you ever been criticized? Has anybody ever come to you with your own child and say, well, if they're my child, that child might be 17 years old. If they're my child, I'd have them in church. I'd beat them all the way to church. Oh, really? Yeah, let's try. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or yeah, or, or, why are you talking to those people? You know, Jesus did. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Okay? The issue of circumcision was it necessary, was it necessary for salvation created a division in the early church. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the uncircumcised believers criticized him, Acts 11 and 2. Criticism, uh, criticus, literally means able to discern or skilled in judging. So now, think about this. Able to discern or skilled in judging. Criticism has two different meanings. Number one, speaking fairly with discernment in regard to merit or favor, like a literary critic, critic uh, is expected to give a fair critique by accurately in that analyzing, judging, and reporting. It's sort of like you can tell the tree by the fruit of the nose. You can judge a tree by the fruit of the nose. Then the, the bad one is, here's the bad one. Speaking unfairly with trivial or harsh judgments, a person with a critical spirit gives unfair criticism by fault finding, nitpicking, and quibbling. So now, the Bible stresses the important part of our right in wrong words. The tongue has power of life and death. Proverbs 18, 21. Now, here it is. We, 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 we've, been, uh, we've been talking about the critical. Now we're going in, we're going in to, to where God wants us. So now, we've been talking about Job and talking about his three friends and how the three friends came. And it started out good. Matter of fact, while they sat there with him and loved on him and waited, they were doing good. You know, you know what the problem happened? And they when they mouth. open their mouth. You know something? A lot of times we'd be a whole lot better off if we just didn't open our mouth. Here it goes. <laughs> so, so, so what is, what is encouragement? You know, after Eliab's speech, Job replies in his own defense and he's expressing uh, a need for sincere encouragement instead of wounding words. Because now these guys are hurting him. They're beating him up. They're telling him that if you had lived right before God, this wouldn't be happening. If, if you know, obviously there's something wrong in your life and God's punishing you for it. Uh, all this stuff, they're going on back and forth. And he said, my brothers, in Job 6.15, uh, he says, my brothers are as undependable as intermittent streams, as the streams that overflow. And this is some heavy stuff that you're talking about now. I mean, this, he's comparing the stuff he knew back then. Uh, I'm pretty sure now we would say something like, uh, my brothers are as undependable as a car that only cranks every third time. Or as a garden full of weeds. You know, you can't even get your stuff out. So, 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 so Job, his friends increase his burdens rather than help relieve them. Have, have you ever had somebody increase your burden versus relieve you? Now I'm going to ask a hard one. And I'm guilty. I'll be the first one to raise my hand. Have you ever tried to help somebody and increase their burdens rather than help them. I have. I'm sorry that I, I can say that, but yeah, I have. Uh, God showed me, and once God showed me, I, now I try my best not to do that again, but early on, in my early Christian experience, I thought it was my duty to pull out the sword and cut off the ear. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That is the most awesome response to that. That's right. I couldn't put it back on. 
And so, so instead of increasing the burdens rather than helping relieve, he further responds, now you two have you two have proved to be of no help. You see something dreadful and are afraid, Job 6, uh, 21. So now, 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 in the truth, I want to think about this, in truth from our very earliest of years, I mean the absolute earliest of years, we've all yearned for approval. We've all cried out for encouragement, haven't we? There was a man that went to, I think I told you, I know I told you this, the man went to his door one day, and a neighbor's dog from across the street was sitting there with, with his paper in his mouth. The man's paper, he'd gone out there on the sidewalk and picked it up and brought it to the man. So the man saw the dog sitting there with his paper in his mouth. He went, grabbed it beside him, he had some treats by the door, he picked up a treat and he gave the dog a treat. He said, nice boy. The next day he comes back and the dog's at his door again, but this time he's got 11 papers. <laughs> He got all, he got all, all around and got all he could get to get more treats. Amen. So, so, so again, uh, we all yearn and we all need. We need encouragement. Tell somebody we need encouragement. We need encouragement. The Bible says. Actually, the Bible says. You know, let me tell you. This. Think about this. When, when we learn to write, our hearts cry out, "Mommy, look at what I drew." Think about it. But when, when we learn to swim or play baseball, our hearts cry out, Daddy, look here. Daddy, look at me. And just as children need encouragement, adults need encouragement too. Uh, but not just occasionally. The Bible says we need encouragement regularly. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Hebrews 3 and 13, it tells us that we we'll exhort or encourage one another daily, but exhort one another daily. While it's called today, at least any of you be hardened through the deceitful of sin. But it, but it, see, encourage, encourage one another daily. Encouragement means one person inspiring another person with comfort, counsel, and confidence. Think about it. So encouragement is just not a not a that a boy. Although that a boys are nice sometimes. But when you get older, it gets to the point where that a boys don't mean a whole lot. <laughs> well, you know, I've got to the point now that if I hear something like you sure chop that garden good, I'm thinking they want me to chop this garden. And they're going to walk away. You can sure mow that lawn good. Yeah, really. <laughs> but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Encouragement means one person inspiring another person with comfort, counsel, and confidence. Think about it. You know, I, I walk up to people all the time and I, and, and, and I hear them doing something, hear them saying something, and I walk up to them and go, you know what? That was awesome. And they go, I don't know what I'm doing. I said, I didn't say you knew what you were doing. I just said that was awesome. You know, uh, or I'll say, Linda, you sure look beautiful today. She go, look at this. I haven't put any makeup. I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt. I said, I didn't say you were ready for Miss America pageant. <laughs> I said, you were beautiful. I just tell my boys, I said, boys, if you want a beautiful woman, find one that's beautiful with and without makeup. That's a pretty woman. I said, if you get one only Maybelline can help, you in trouble when Maybelline's not around. <laughs> That's right, ugly to the bone. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> so look, so here we go. Encourage literally means to cause another to be confident. To cause another to be confident. I, I had a grandbaby. I had one of my grandbabies. I'll just let them remain nameless because there's a whole bunch of them. Matter of fact, I've had two or three of them come to me and say, Papa, will you teach me how to play softball? And I said, Your daddies know how to play softball. They said, Yeah, you taught our daddies. <laughs> now, can you teach us? And so, what that was telling me is, they wanted Paul Paul's years of wisdom. 
and calmness <laughs> versus daddy. Can't you get this right? <laughs> because when I, as a matter of fact, I'm about to try to teach him how to play, and this year Danny's going to say, where's the man that taught us how to play? <laughs> So obviously they've taken your taking your brain out and stuck somebody else's in there. <laughs> that's not the same man that's all. <laughs> but people want to be encouraged. They want to be made to feel confident. The prefix in means to cause or to be encouraged means confidence. So the encourager causes others to have confidence, to do what it needs, what needs to be done, and to make needed changes. So think about this thing now. There's a lot of times all people are waiting for is just somebody. Whether you believe it or not, some people are just waiting for a little push. Linda and I were watching, we love to watch uh, National Geographic and uh, the Animal Planet, watch all these animals and all this stuff. It's just so awesome to watch it. We were watching the wood duck last night. And the wood duck was up in a tree and laid her eggs and the eggs hatched and all these little bitty wood ducks come and stood at the edge of that big old tree wailing up in the air. And I kept telling him, I've seen a commercial, that duck jumps out of that tree. And she goes, that duck didn't jump out of that tree. What are you drinking? <laughs> I said, I'm not drinking anything. The duck jumped out of the tree. And so she finally saw it. She says, oh, it did jump out. But where did it land? I said, I don't know. It won't finish the commercial. And so last night we got a chance to see it. And those little ducks watched their mama jump out of that tree. And they went about 20 foot and landed in the water. And so here comes those little wood ducks. They don't even, I mean, they just got down on them. And when they jumped out of the tree, they got down fast. <laughs> and they're going all around, and then they're laying, and they pop them straight up, and then they're just having a little bottle of little wood ducks. You know, and I was thinking, all they needed was a little encouragement. And they jumped out of that tree 20 feet. How many people do you think around you could really benefit from you just giving them one encouraging word. Jim and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not jumping out of the tree at 20 feet, but how many people do you think could really benefit? Because you know, you think people might not might not care what you think, or they may not uh, think that they really think much of what you got, what you have to say. But you know what? There's a lot of times, you know, I, I've gone up to people before and I said, you know what? That is probably one of the best whatever that was going on. I won't make it up. That's one of the best things I've seen to somebody your age. Or, 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 man, that was so awesome, man. I was encouraged just listening and, and hear him say, you know what? Nobody's ever told me. But you can believe one thing. Mr. Billy pays attention to what you say. <laughs> yes, he does. Okay. So, so, the Lord encouraged Joshua, be strong and very courageous. And then the Israelites to, to, uh, in the land God promised to give them. So, so again, the Bible says we all. Y'all say all. all. This is it means me. That means me. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we all should be encouragers. First Thessalonians 5 and 11. It says, Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also you do. Therefore, or therefore encourage, admonish, exhort one another and edify, strengthen and build up one another just as you are doing. So, so encouragement here also translated from the Greek word paraklesis. Now, paraklesis, that is almost, almost the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is paraklesis. So you got the paraklesis. So what they're telling us to do is, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit comes along beside us and he guides us and he comforts us and he's there to strengthen us and he helps us and he shows us and he's there. And God says, I want y'all to do the same thing. Get along beside somebody. Let them feel some, some you know, call to the one's aid, give comfort and give counsel. Para means beside. Kaleo means to call. So we are, we are to come alongside and to comfort others. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. See, there's a difference there. The paraclete our comforter, our counselor, our advocate. And so, so, so we are to walk alongside and encourage people. They took a man and they stuck him in ice water. They took off his shoes, took off his socks. They put him in a pair of shorts. They stuck him in a bucket of ice. He lasted five seconds. He came out. 
They took the same man and put him in the bucket of ice and everybody stood around him and said, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Come on now, we can do this. The same guy that was in there for only five seconds standing there for a minute. Think about it. We can encourage one another. You, know, you say, well, I don't have any great gifts. Oh, I tell somebody to do a good job. Does that take a lot of great gifts to tell them they're doing a good job? <laughs> or watch this one. I'm praying for you. Or what about this one? Uh, you know, when I heard you sing or when I heard this and that, I, I really felt comfortable inside. That was so assuring. It helped me. I had, I had somebody today. Today. I did a funeral a long time ago. And I had somebody today. Out of clear blue, text me. They were thinking about that funeral. And they texted me. Of course, God knew because it felt I needed to hear things. You know what I'm saying? But but they said, You'll never you'll never know how God used you to bring comfort to my heart. Now, this is way on back. Do you reckon when they, and they didn't tell me that at the funeral. Way on back. I know the Holy Spirit was talking to them today and said, you know, David could use this right now. You know, they don't know what's going on, but, you know, go ahead. And so, so again, they just said, you know what? And all they said was, they didn't say, you know, you did blah, 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 blah. They just said, I thank God because what you said brought so much encouragement to my hurting heart. My hurting heart. And so, again, you can encourage me. It's so simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. It doesn't take some kind of degree. You can, look, you can have more degrees than a thermometer and still mess it. It's not the degrees that you It is simply the Holy Spirit does that. It comes alongside. You can do it. You can do it. You know, back in the day, back in the, back in the day, they had the Holy Spirit going and beating us down all the time. Go to church, get beat down, and go out and feel like you've been beat to death. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit loves us and, and encourages us. And then when we do wrong down here, they'll take you to the woodshed if you do wrong. You can go to the woodshed. But you know what? A loving father's going to take you to the woodshed. Okay? I didn't say beat you to death like Beth and get her face caved in. I'm talking about correction. Okay? So now, so now going back though, how hard is it? Just think about this in your own mind. Just keep thinking in your mind when you're watching somebody do something and say, that was a good job. That sounded good. Man, you're looking good today. You know, you done something good. And even something like this. Something as simple as, well, you know what? I really like the way you wear your hair. Simple stuff. I try to find something about everybody. And try to say something good because you know what? You never know how bad that day they've been having, and that one little compliment can wind up changing their entire day because you encourage them. Remember, it's not a compliment, it's encouragement. There's a difference. Look for something legitimate and encourage them. Don't just pop out a clear blue sky and say, you know, something that makes absolutely no sense. Find something. I try to take the first few seconds when I see somebody, uh, especially if they're, if they're doing an activity, and of course, I can, I've got concrete activity, but if they're not doing an activity, I can at least watch. If I see something that looks, you know, try to compliment them in some way, because you may make their day, literally. Right? Jesus said, the Father will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The comfort which is the Holy Spirit shall teach you all things. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I was riding down the road today, and I said, Lord, I'm definitely not perfect, but you are. Lord, I definitely don't have all the answers, but you do. Lord, I can't be with my family members every single man, but you do. So they're in your hands, Lord. If somebody's going to step all night and worry, let it be you, because you're up anyway. Amen? Again, we can encourage ourselves. I was encouraging myself right down the road. It's okay. If, if you're an authentic Christian, consider this. The Holy Spirit has the power to comfort and counsel you to change. Because all true Christians have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The very presence of the Spirit of God 
is dwelling. You know what? I've done it. You know, yeah, I, I, like I, I told somebody one time, I told somebody that was on the praise team, they said, well, they're not, they're not praising. And I said, dude, it's not your responsibility. If they're praising, not your responsibility to leave the praise. I said, you're not responsible for everybody out there. If they want to praise, then praise them. If they want to sit there like not some log, then sit like not some log. I said, matter of fact, I said, some folks, some folks, here's how they praise. Some folks are like this. That's right. Everybody's different. Some people do like this. Some people tap the foot. If you don't see that person up jumping around and around, it's okay. Because they still can be praising. You watch me and Linda. Linda's like a little sprinkler system. So gorgeous. Just beautiful sprinkler system. And me, I'm like a hose with the end cut off. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Everybody's different. It's all right. So now, I know, see, y'all didn't used to see me standing up and play the bass. I sat down for years and played the bass. And then, then the guys got me standing up. So now you get to see me, now you get to see me doing what I did sitting. But the only people saw me do it last night before was the piano players and the praise team. You know, nobody else saw it. Now everybody gets to see it. <laughs> yeah. And then you also see, so you also see DC, who is very much similar. <laughs> yeah, DC, yeah, DC, DC. Dan, Daniel's more subdued, but DC's more like that. You know, I look over and I think that boy getting down today. And then he'll look over and say, "Dan, you were getting down today." So, oh, I want to pay attention to me. <laughs> okay. The very presence of the Spirit of God. So you were empowered. Think about. I want you to just uh, think about this. You say, "How can I encourage somebody?" Listen to me. I want you to hear this again and again and again. The very presence of the Spirit of God dwells within you. Wow. Isn't that awesome? The very presence of the Spirit of God. You are, you are empowered to be an extension of the Comforter's ministry. There's a supernatural power of God that can work through us to inspire others who need to change or have courage to change you know, it's amazing how you walk along and you see somebody and you just have this odd feeling to tell them something. You tell them, you know, uh, something sometimes really kind of out there. You go, well, you know, I was just sitting there and, and I felt need to tell you that, 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 you know, whatever. And they'll go, wow, I need to hear that, Dave, because I was just wondering, God, I may be making an impact. And here it goes. <clears throat> so, if you, well, here's the sad part. Here's the critical spirit. I knew, you know I wasn't going to let you get away without, without having something that was going to be kind of tight. So here we go. <clears throat> if you sit in judgment of someone else, the exercise of a critical spirit may actually prevent the very changes you wish to see. Think about it. If you've got a child, you've got a spouse, you've got a co-worker, and you know they need to change, but you're being critical, do you know you can actually throw them a roadblock? They need to change. They need to change. They need God to help them. But if you have a critical spirit toward them, you can block, you can hinder the change. So <clears throat> it's better to, you know, to, 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 to back off. There, there's, there's the known presence of God and there's the presence of God. Then we, we asked Bethany when she was in jail. Bethany, do you know God's with you? She said, I don't feel him. I said, you don't have to feel him. He's here. She said, I've let him down. I said, well, you still, he's here. There's the presence of God and there's the known presence of God. <clears throat> and right now, what's going on in your life has helped you is, is put up a wall, a barrier, but God's still here. He's still here. And if you, if you through His help pull down that wall, you'll feel it. You'll know His presence is here. <clears throat> Same way, one of their lamb blasted would not have helped. Not a bit. All right. So now, there's only one lawgiver and one judge. The one who is able to save and to destroy. But you, 
I love this, James 4 and 12. See, see, if Peter wrote the book of James, people probably wouldn't have read it. Because if you realize this thing, James is the New Testament version of Proverbs. James has some awesome stuff. But James was an apologist. James would take him and would reason the stuff out. So he's talking some heavy duty stuff, but he's doing it in such a way as because he's an apologist, you welcome him. Now, Peter was an evangelist. Peter wouldn't have said that calm. Peter would, you know, throw him fire out there. But James comes in here, New Testament book of Proverbs, he's coming through here. And all this is, is, is going on. So, it's like Hebrews is the New Testament book of Leviticus. When I say the New Testament book of Leviticus, I don't mean it's actually Leviticus. I mean... In the Old Testament, what Leviticus does for the Old Testament, Hebrews does for the New Testament. What Proverbs does for the Old Testament, James does for the New Testament. So, there's only one lawgiver, one judge, the one who is able to save and destroy, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? James 4 and 12. So remember, when, when there's, there's just two things I want to leave you with, and I, I really believe I need to leave this with you and say it again. Remember, we are called to encourage, and we're paraclesis, and the Holy Spirit's the paraclete. Here's, here's the difference. He, he's God, we're not. Like Brother Billy said, I might can cut off his ear, but I can't put it back on. <laughs> you got to put that ear back on. That's what the Holy Spirit does. But here's what we do. We're called along side to comfort and encourage one another. And remember, here you say, well, I can't do that. I don't have the tithes. Here it is, again. The very Spirit of God dwells in you. It's powerful. You think little voices talking in your head, telling you it's right and wrong, and, and telling you things. It's that Spirit of God dwelling within you. It's not some little angel like seeing cartoons of a little devil. You know, it's the Holy Spirit. And of course, the devil's still using your flesh to talk to you. But, but again, that Holy Spirit, He dwells within you. And He wants you to be, He empowers you to be an extension of His ministry. And number two, if you set in judgment of someone, you, and if you exercise a critical spirit, whether it be your, and I believe somebody needs to hear this, whether it be your husband, whether it be your wife, whether it be your children, whether it be your neighbor, whether it be a co-worker, if you have a critical spirit with that person, you may actually prevent the very changes that need to take place. But if you encourage them, guess what? The changes will start to happen. Romans 8 11. Okay. That's right. That's good. That's good. So now, is, now next week we're going to talk about what God's heart is on the critical spirit. The next question, anybody got any questions, comments? I got one little comment. Let it rip. One very simple thing that encourages me. Mm -hmm. Real simple. Especially on Sunday night and Tuesday night. Is to see people just to see people show up mm -hmm. on Sunday morning too, but more so. I mean, when I see any one of you walk in that door, it's just such a blessing. Then every now and then somebody open their mouth and no play. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anybody else before we close? Who else? Have you, have, you, have you learned anything about encouragement tonight? Amen? I, you know, it was funny because Linda, she's taking New Testament in her college. 
And of course, she's taking a 16 week semester in five weeks. So it's 3.2 weeks worth of work at one time. And so we sit on the couch and she's, she's, with, she's in my foray right now, but she's getting ready to go into psychology. So now I'll be, I'll be sitting on the couch and she'll be practicing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna encourage her, but I try to encourage her all I can. But but uh, uh, it was funny. Is they said after you got the first couple chapters of her book, and said, "Well, give us three things you learned about Jesus you didn't know." And she said, "Honey, I'm a student of the Word." She says, "I haven't learned anything different, you know, about Jesus. I mean, this I, uh, this is stuff I already knew. It's kind of like you know, I'm just going over it again." I said, well, thank you, son. My wife's from Virginia. And she said, you know what? She said, I got it. She said, I know Jesus is from heaven, of course. She said, but on earth he had to be from Virginia. <laughs> and I said, how did she come from Virginia? He said, because she was born from the Virginian Mary. <laughs> 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 I said, well, I want you to put that on your paper. I said, I want you to put that on your paper. She says, no, I want to pass my class. I'm not going to put it down there. But but we have, we have if you want to pick on if you want to pick on her, if you want to pick on her sometime on Sunday, say, you know, I heard Jesus was a Virginian. You know, there was this guy that was uh, blew, blew himself up. Blew himself up. Uh, he was, uh, you know, thinking that Muhammad had told him he was going to have 70 virgins and he blew himself up and he stands before, stands, he, he stands on the other side after he has blown himself up and there's Thomas Jefferson and there's George Washington and there's Monroe and there's Adams and he says, wait a minute, I thought I was going to get 70 virgins. He says, oh, you misread that. You're going to meet 70 Virginians. <laughs> <laughs> And we're mad. You're a Virginia too. Oh, all right, Wayne. That's awesome. Well, where are you from in Virginia? Great Ridge, Chesapeake. Chesapeake. Linda's from Richmond, I think. There's something called Crew, which is right outside. And yeah, she's from Crew, Virginia, but also, I think it's Richmond. I, 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 I get mixed up. She, she gets taught all these places, and I have no idea. You know. <laughs> All right, uh, no more questions. Remember, here, here's, here's, your, uh, here's your challenge for the week. Here's your challenge. i got to be careful how they issue challenges because I'm preaching on attitude, and every time I preach on attitude, <laughs> something has happened to tear my attitude all to pieces. So, you know, but praise God, he's holding it together for me. Uh, here's your, here it is. I want you to be more conscious of having a critical Spirit. And instead of criticizing somebody or their actions, instead of criticizing them, encourage them. Because remember, everybody needs to change a little bit, don't we? I do. Guess what? I need to change. Yeah, yeah I might. Mean, you know, if you don't think I need to change, ask my wife. Somebody says, somebody asks me, who preaches to the preacher? I said, that's why they've got wives. <laughs> I mean, I'm Brother David here when I get home. It's not Brother David, okay? <laughs> it's, David, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you thinking? Amen. Oh, she's not bad. She's, she's a good woman. I love her. Very dear. Okay. So, so I want you to encourage. Try this now. Instead of criticizing, encourage. And see if you don't see a difference. And sometimes it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. But try encouraging versus criticizing. And see the difference it makes. I was walking with Bethany in Walmart this morning because she went and, got, went and got her job back and was talking to Leo and how to get her job back. Uh, you go ahead. This year of 2015 has been a terrific challenge for me. From the 40 days in the hospital all down to the operation and everything. All of this has been a challenge. But I have been encouraged. I want to tell you, I've told him over and over again, he is my encourager. Come on. And, and I have never came to see that. That was a bit encouraging. And that's why I am where I am today. Amen. 
called to encourage each other. Called to help out each other. That's right. Amen. We're to help out each other. Well, Bethany this morning, I had her with me. And this lady that I know, I've been knowing her for several years, her son was a deputy while my son was a deputy. And we, we just got, we keep crossing paths. And, and she was an EMT while I was an EMT, blah, blah, blah. Well, she was walking in Walmart this morning. And we had just left the Dollar Tree to get her job back. And, and we're walking in to pick up some stuff to carry back to the house. And as we're walking through this woman, I see this woman, and she got this about a, I don't know, 13, 14 year old girl with her. And she's done her trial, she looks at me, that woman does, and she says, Pray for me. I saw the face. And I said, Okay. And she looks behind her and she says, She's out of school. I said, that doesn't sound good. But I didn't say anything. And she said, again, please pray for me and pray for her. And I said, I sure will. God's in control. God's got it all together. And I said, and while you're busy praying for you, that, there's somebody standing behind me who could use your prayers too. <laughs> Bethany was fine. <laughs> but again, Encourage, encourage, because beating them up is not going to help. Beating up's never helped. Encourage. You can do it. That's right. You can do it. You can do it. You can do this. So, let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. Help us, Lord, to accept that challenge this week to encourage one another. In the, and even in the worst of situations, help us to encourage, Lord, because, because we realize that a critical spirit does not help. A critical spirit, all it does is cause problems. So, Father, I ask you, Lord, to help us to be encouragers. The Holy Spirit dwells within us, and the Holy Spirit is an encourager. And I ask you right now, Father, to help us lean on the Holy Spirit and let Him help us to be encouragers to other people this week. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 And amen.